Did you ever really think about how much water there is in the world? There's a lot of water. So where in the world is all this water? Well, let's take a look at our world and see. Right away, you can see that three-fourths or 75% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. The rest is land. And 97% of all that water is salty. And boy, we sure can't drink that. So that would leave about 3% fresh water. And most of that is trapped in glaciers or icebergs and is too difficult to get to. So that leaves about 1% of all the water in all the world for all the people to share. Wow, 1%. That sure isn't very much water. Gads. I wonder how much of that 1% is available to us in California. And speaking of where in the world is all the water, where in the world am I? And where's the water? Wow, looks like it hasn't rained here in some time. You don't suppose we're having a drought? Now, oh, wait a minute, let's see. It's hot, it's dry, there's dry vegetation. There's not too many water sources, and I know I just saw a rattlesnake. I must be in the desert. And did you know that if we take away the houses, the streets, the freeways, the big buildings, the gardens, and your front yards, you would see all of Southern California is a very dry place. Oh, doesn't look good though. If I don't find some fresh water soon, I'm a goner. Where am I now? Oh look, I must be at your school. Man, am I thirsty. I'm practically dehydrated. I wonder if your school has any water. Uh, excuse me, pardon me, I, excuse me, what's your name? Hi, my name is Rudy. Oh, hi Rudy, does your school have water? Yes. Well, can you take me to the drinking fountain? Sure, why not? Oh, thanks a lot. So, how do you like school, Rudy? Oh, thanks a lot, Rudy. Okay. I'll see you, okay? Bye. Thank you. Mmm, nothing like a good, cool drink of water. Say, did you ever stop to think about where this precious resource comes from? Hmm. Well, come on with me. Let's go find out where our water comes from. Oh, there's plenty of water. But you're right. We can't use much of that water because it's too salty. Now, here's a source of water that's available to us, groundwater. You know, water that's deep underground in wells and aquifers. However, the water must be pumped to the surface so that we can get it. How much of this groundwater you have, well, that depends on where you live. Most of our water comes to us from something called an aqueduct, and that's what this is right here. An aqueduct is a pipeline that's made out of pipes and concrete that transports water for hundreds and hundreds of miles. It's sort of a freeway system, only this one's for water. Yeah, I know this doesn't look very deep, but this can be over 11 feet in depth at times. There are three aqueducts that bring water to Southern California. The very first aqueduct that was built is called the Los Angeles Aqueduct. This aqueduct starts in the Owens Valley and flows by gravity to the Los Angeles area. It's about 335 miles long and brings water to the people who live in the city of Los Angeles. The second aqueduct, the Colorado River Aqueduct, brings water from the Colorado River, 242 miles over the mountains and across the desert. And the third aqueduct, the California Aqueduct is the longest. 444 miles brings water from the Northern California area, starting near Sacramento. As you can see, Northern California in the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada mountain range is rich and lush with its many rivers and lakes and snow-packed mountains. 
But we live in the southern part of the state, where it's mostly desert, and water has to be transported through all these aqueducts to get to us. So let's follow this water, your drinking water, from the very beginning all the way to the tap in your house. I think it's going to be a wet trip. I hope you're prepared. Okay, let's go with the flow! This lake was created by building a dam to hold the water back. Huge pumps are constantly pumping billions of gallons of water out of the lake. And you know what? These pumps are so powerful, they can pump the water out of a swimming pool in less than a second. As the water is pumped from the lake, it creates tremendous power. So much power that we can use it to make electricity. And electricity is generated here at the hydroelectric power plant. After all of that, the water then goes into the aqueduct system to begin its long journey to you. Whoa, that was a lot of neat stuff we just saw, huh? I'll tell you, I'm plenty tired and I'm even more hungry. So I just picked out this spot and I'm gonna sit down and relax a bit, take a rest and have my sandwich. Well, you know, just like we have to take time to relax and stretch out a bit, well, so does water, especially water that's been moving and being shoved through an aqueduct system like we just saw. See this water behind us here? That's exactly what this water is doing. After coming through the system, it's spreading out and it's stretching out and it's just calming down a bit. And all water does that and it does it in places called like lakes or reservoirs, what you're seeing behind us here. Uh, this body of water behind us, that's called Lake Matthews, but it really is our reservoir. Do you know how big it is? Well, I'll tell you, there's 60 billion gallons in that body of water back there. That's enough to fill three million swimming pools. Gee, I wonder how many fish bowls that would be. Oh, you figure it out. <laughs> and you know where the water's going? Once the water goes in the outlet structure, it drops underground into a great, great big pipeline. And then travels off, and where the water's headed is to a filtration plant. So it'll be clean enough and healthy enough for us to drink once it gets to our houses. And you know that's where we're going. Yeah, of course, after I've had my sandwich. Ah oh man, tuna fish again. Welcome to the Weymouth Filtration Plant. The water's arrived and so have we. Now let's see what happens to the water while it's here. Remember that the water has traveled over 300 miles through the aqueduct system. During its journey, all types of dirt and germs and even fish have gotten into the water. Ever since it left the reservoir, the raw, or dirty water, has traveled underground through large pipes. Now it's finally here to be cleaned and treated. There are five steps in the treatment process. First, we disinfect the water. Chlorine is the primary disinfectant for drinking water. However, Metropolitan is changing its primary disinfectant to a more effective technology called ozonation. Ozonation is a colorless gas, a form of oxygen, which is injected into the water to destroy a wide range of dangerous bacteria and organisms that could make us sick. Second, we begin cleaning the water by a process called flocculation. Here, two different chemicals are added to the water, alum, and polymers. With the help of big, slow-turning paddles, these two chemicals will mix with the floating dirt particles in the water. The dirt particles become sticky and stick to each other until they eventually become heavy, gluey globs. Now it's time for the third step in treating the water, sedimentation. Those gluey globs have gotten so heavy, they can't float anymore. Now they drop and settle to the bottom and become sludge. The cleaner water floats to the top and goes on to the next step, which is filtration, the fourth step in treating the water. Here, the water filters down through a layer of charcoal, fine sand, and gravel. When the water filters down through these layers, 
we're making sure that every particle of dirt has been removed. But still, the water isn't safe enough to drink. So, now we come to our fifth and final step, disinfection. This is where we add chlorine and ammonia to the water. When these two guys get together, they create a new chemical called chloramines. And when we add chloramines, it gives a one-two punch to any last germs that might still be hanging around. We must make sure that this water is safe to drink. But how do we know it's safe? This is how, in the Water Quality Lab. Here, chemists, microbiologists, and water experts are very busy. They are continuously conducting extremely important tests on our water. Why? They conduct over 320,000 tests a year. Now let's see some of these tests. Samples are tested to find any strange microorganisms that may be hiding in the water. They are also tests to check for hardness. That means the level of minerals that's in the water. And we test for turbidity, or how clear it looks. Last but not least, the water must pass the inspection of a panel of taste testers. Did you know that out of all the tests performed and all the instruments used to test water quality, the most sensitive instrument is the nose. So the taste testers first smell the water samples to detect any unusual odors. Then they taste for flavor. Then they test and taste again, and again, and again. After comparing and recording, they determine whether the taste is acceptable. When they agree that it is ready to drink, it's ready for you. Well, now you've seen it all. You've seen disinfection, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection again and inspection at the Water Quality Lab. And when all that is finished, the water is delivered to you through big pipelines just like this that are buried deep underground. How about that? The water will now be distributed to the various water agencies and to many businesses that use water for manufacturing and to fire stations that use millions of gallons to put out fires and to save lives. And then, of course, to your school and to your home, as well as the homes of more than 19 million people in Southern California. And you probably wonder where the dirty water or wastewater goes when it leaves your home. Well, water from taking baths or showers, washing clothes, washing dishes, flushing toilets, leaves our homes through a different set of pipes called sewer pipes and goes to a wastewater treatment plant to be cleaned. The cleaned water is called reclaimed or recycled water and it can be used over and over again, but not to drink. Some of that water is used for irrigation, landscaping and even beautiful fountains. And how about these two wild rides through recycled water? There's never an end to our water needs or uses. Therefore, we are always looking for ways to make sure that there will be enough water for all the people in the future. For example, we're testing a way of removing the salt from ocean water to make it usable. This technology is called desalination. Some places in the United States are already using desalinated water, like Florida and Catalina Island and some places right here in Southern California, like in the city of Long Beach. We're always thinking of new places to store water for future use. In 1999, the Metropolitan Water District built a huge new reservoir in Riverside County. It's called Diamond Valley Lake and holds more than 260 billion gallons of water. Why, that's enough water to cover eight 100,000 football fields. Wow! But it's time to get serious about saving water. So we're always thinking of new methods to conserve water and ways to educate the public, 
like planting California-friendly gardens. That means gardens with plants that are native to California and don't require a lot of water. And also turning off the water when you brush your teeth or taking shorter showers. Installing low flush toilets. Sweeping the driveway instead of using a hose. Checking for leaky faucets. Using a time sprinkler system in the yard. And I know you can think of hundreds of more ways to save water. Well, we're back. Thanks for coming along with me. That was some great trip, huh? Now we know all about our water. We know where it comes from, we know how it moves in, and we know what it has to go through before we can actually use it. You know, you can kind of consider yourself water smart. So that means that you, and you, and you, and I will now have to start using our water wisely.